The eclipse is on August 21st, uh, 2017, so that's a Monday. And uh, here in Colombia, it starts at about um, uh, 1 14, I believe, and that's actually when the very first edge of the moon and the sun kind of come together. And at about 2.41, that's when we have totality here. And so totality is when the moon completely eclipses the sun and we're seeing just those edge features. And that lasts two and a half minutes in Colombia. And then this goes on until after 4.30. So it's a long event. What's going to happen on that particular day, the moon is coming in front of sun and it's blocking the sunlight. And that very time, you can see black. So why don't we have eclipse all the month? The thing is the moon is coming in front of sun every month. But sometimes what is happening that moon is tilted five degrees and then moving around the earth. So sometimes the shadow is, when it's coming in front of sun, the shadow of the moon goes above or below the earth, not on the earth. But if it is lying on the earth and you are in that particular area of that shadow and then you are looking up, then you can see the completely black sun. As you can see this shadow, if you are in this area, like let's suppose you're in Anderson, Greenville, Columbia, Orangeburg, Charleston, then you can see completely black sun, that is total solar eclipse. If you are in like in Spartanburg, you are a little out for the total solar eclipse. It is the rare times uh, when the moon and the sun and the earth are perfectly aligned so that the shadow is, hits directly. Of course, the eclipses happen all the, uh, pretty frequently, actually. Eclipses are not rare, but often they happen over big bodies of water, so we don't have opportunities to see them, or very re remote places. The last one was in Micronesia, um, and so a lot of people can't travel to Micronesia to see an eclipse. So the last time we had a transcontinental eclipse in uh, the United States was um, 99 years ago. So this is very rare to have this much land covered. This is the first time, I think, Americans have been this mobile. Of course, back in 1918, Americans were not very mobile, so the opportunity to travel from Maine or Miami to come to Columbia, South Carolina was not there. Nowadays, of course, um, people can travel all they want, and they will, and they will come to the path of the totality. And one of the other really neat things is that kind of brings in the, the natural history discipline is the environmental effects that we get. You know, when, the, when we get a, a, an eclipse, you get um, twilight in a 360 degree plane. So it's really different from the twilight we get in the western sky at sunset. The entire horizon becomes twilight, which is a really unique thing. Um, and then, of course, birds and animals, whether they're diurnal or they might be crepuscular, that means they're out at dawn and dusk. Um, and then, of course, you might have nocturnal animals and so they all respond to changing light. And it's really weird. Of course, they have no idea what's going on. They can't begin to know. Uh, so being able to, to deal with, uh, listen to that and listen to birds and dogs and uh, animals do things that they normally wouldn't do is really cool. Um, and then I think um, just the, kind of the overall experience of feeling that, no, knowing that you're looking at a moon that is covering the sun and kind of understanding our spatial relationship to those two bodies, it's just amazing. It's really fun. and. Uh, I think that all of that together really uh, combines to just a great experience. To look at an eclipse, you really need to wear the right glasses, and they're not just like sunglasses. These glasses block out almost all of the light from the sun so that you can safely look at the sun. Um, and these, fortunately, we have a lot of these and, um, here at the museum, and we, you can come and try these out if you want to, which is a great thing to do to see what it looks like when you stare at the sun. The entire month of um, August, actually every Saturday, we will have special eclipse events, so all kinds of stuff. We're going to do some things that are just STEM related, things like rocket launching, hover, we're going to have a hovercraft, we're going to make our own hovercraft. Um, we're going to do things like make your own pinhole viewer, uh, all the different types of things, that uh, ways you can look at the eclipse. Um, we'll also have the observatory open, the telescope gallery, the entire museum. And then the weekend before the eclipse, there are so many people who are coming to Columbia for the event itself. We have uh, the, the whole museum is open, a special planetarium show that talks about how eclipses happen um, and what to expect on that day. Uh, we also will have um, uh, a 4D theater opened, and of course the observatory. So everyone will get a good advance on understanding what eclipses are and then learning all about the great state of South Carolina. This eclipse really is going to be uh, something we won't have a chance to see again unless you do want to travel. And uh, I think a lot of people nowadays like to stare through their phones at things. That's a real mistake, I think, in this case. I think there will be enough images and, you know, and people who take pictures of an eclipse who are trained to do that will get much better pictures than any of us will get with a phone. So really, I encourage people to, to experience it as best they can by 
thinking about all the things that are going on around them, looking through your glasses, and then here taking them off and seeing all of that uh, crazy stuff that's happening outside of that part of the sun that we never can see because it is impossible to see without an eclipse. And it's really cool to think that nature takes care of that for us and, uh, and we can't make it happen again. So spend your time thinking about the real thing that's happening and put your phones in your pocket for a little while. You can always tweet about it later. So yeah, enjoy it. <laughs>